use of stem cell as gene transfer vehicle in ex vivo gene therapy has gained much attention recently. Stem cells have the ability to self-renew, which means that the need to provide repeated administrations of gene therapy can be reduced or possibly even eliminated. Among all type of stem cells, autologous embryonic stem cell is in the spotlight. This is because it has a greater potential for self-renewal and is able to retain stemness in laboratory for far longer time than adult stem cell. This gives more time and higher success rate in ex vivo genetic manipulation of the cells. Besides, embryonic stem cell created from somatic nuclear transfer will have no problem of immune rejection. There are many problems in gene therapy especially the application of embryonic stem cell such as the use of embryonic stem cell as a vector in gene therapy, ethical issue arise on moral status of embryo and oocyte donation can cause side effects in women. Using embryonic stem cell as vehicle in gene therapy has shown potential in treating many kinds of diseases including autoimmune, hematopoietic and metabolic diseases. Despite its therapeutic potential, Gene therapy research using embryonic stem cell is ethically controversial because it involves the moral status of embryo. Embryonic stem cells are isolated from 5 to 7 days old blastocyst and this will cause the destruction of the blastocyst. Embryo should be treated as a life as it will develop into human being. Therefore, embryo deserves the same protection as a fetus or an adult human. Killing an embryo is same as killing a life. The acquisition of unfertilized human eggs is another area of controversy. The procedure to retrieve eggs from women requires a series of drugs and surgery. Women who donate eggs face a small but real risk of death and are certain to endure discomfort. In most countries, women can be paid to donate eggs to infertile couples, but many ethicists, lawyers and women's rights activists feel that women should not be compensated for donating eggs for research. Other ethicists feel that they should, at least to compensate for time lost from work and other costs to them. There are two current issues that related to the application of embryonic stem cells such as diabetes mellitus treatment and teratoma formation. Diabetes mellitus type 1 is a genetic inheritance disease cause of lacking production of insulin by pancreas. Specifically, beta cells which can be found in pancreas are function to produce insulin, but in diabetes mellitus type 1, gene encodes have wrong function for beta cells, in which beta cell destroy the insulin. Clinical trial began on diabetes mellitus in 2014 by using embryonic stem cells. This trial focuses on efficiency of VC01, which contain embryonic stem cells derived from pancreatic progenitor cells. This VC01 will lead the cells to proliferate into mature beta cells. However, there are still underlying risk or side effect of embryonic stem cells treatment. Currently, scientist has been discovered of the side effect of embryonic stem cells application. Pluripotency of embryonic stem cells potentially will develop germ cell layers early of embryonic stem cells growth, this pluripotency of embryonic stem cells has high risk to form teratoma in cells. Teratoma is one of the germ cells tumors that can commonly it formed at ovaries and testicles. Not only that, teratoma can be formed in any part of the body. As mentioned before, the utilization of embryonic stem cell in gene therapy are controversial as causing destruction of embryo. Instead of using embryonic stem cell, the scientist came up with a solution which used adult stem cells such as hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic cells are derived from bone marrow and the cells are important as well as responsible for the continual renewal of erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelet in the body. Other than that, the hematopoietic cells are capable of differentiating into multiple lineages. Hematopoietic cells isolated from bone marrow can be modified ex vivo and transferred back to the recipient to produce functional, terminally differentiated cells. The hematopoietic system is an ideal target for gene therapy because of the ease which HSCs can be accessed for ex vivo gene manipulation, effective gene modification, and readministration as an intravenous infusion. Genetically modified of hematopoietic cells possess several advantages in which resulted in increased lymphocytes count, improved immune functions, lower toxic metabolites, thus capable of treating several diseases such as ADA-SCID sickle cells anemia, thalassaemia, hemophilia, and so on. Next, 
the alternative that can be used to modify the hematopoietic cells for gene therapies is CRISPR-Cas9 technique. This technique has generated a lot of excitement in the scientific community because it is faster, cheaper, more accurate, and more efficient than other existing genome editing methods. First of all, the bone marrow will be isolated from the patients. The genetic modification of hematopoietic cells will be conducted ex vivo in the lab. During genetic editing, a small pieces of RNA molecules with a short guide sequence will be created and attaches to a specific target sequence of DNA in genome. Then, RNA molecules will bind to CAS9 enzyme. The modified RNA is used to recognize the DNA sequence and CAS9 enzyme will cuts the DNA at the targeted location. Once the DNA is cut, the DNA repair mechanism of the cells are activated, thus add and delete pieces of genetic material or make changes on DNA by replacing an existing segment with a customized DNA sequence. Lastly, the genetically modified hematopoietic cells will be retransplanted back to the patients. Hopefully, the genetically modified of cells will differentiate it into functional component, therefore capable of treating the diseases. That it's from Group 5. Thank you.